All right, here we go. Five one and five two. This has to do with bisectors and uh, medians and altitudes and things we do to cut up triangles, angle bisectors, perpendicular bisectors, all that kind of stuff. All right. So first thing is we got to define some things like perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector we've done before. We've constructed it. Perpendicular bisector is a line that cuts through a segment. So you have to have a segment first, and then you cut that segment uh, perfectly in half, sort of with a a line that goes right through there. Not only does it hit the midpoint here of D, but it also has to cut it perfectly um, perpendicularly. So that's defined up here. Here's two theorems about this, and this is a biconditional. So we'll put it as a biconditional on the theorem sheet for you when you go to do your test, so you don't have to worry about which one's which here. But they both kind of have to do with the same picture. If you have a segment and you draw the perpendicular bisector, uh, then it turns out any point on the perpendicular bisector, so like this point C here, has to be the same distance from the endpoints of that segment. In other words, let me draw this here. I think it's going to make more sense if I draw it. Um, if, all right, so I'll do it in order. So first of all, we have a segment of some random length, distance A to B, and then we come along and we say, here's a line that is the perpendicular, well, that's not very good. Here's a line that is the perpendicular bisector. So it goes through here perpendicularly, and that happens. Then if I pick any point on here, this point is the same distance from A as it is from B. This little space to B is the same length as the space to A. In other words, this has to be one giant, if you think about triangle ABC, ABC must be isosceles. There we go. ABC must be isosceles if it starts out life that way. Like in other words, we had a we had a we had a base segment we started with, and we draw the perpendicular bisector. We put a corner on that perpendicular bisector, it completes an isosceles triangle. And you know, it could be right here, that makes an isosceles triangle with A and B. It could be way out here, it could be way out here, it could be up, you know, at the moon, it doesn't matter. If it's on that perpendicular bisector, it's gonna make one giant um, isosceles triangle. The converse, of course, is the other way around. It says if you know you have a point that's equidistant, in other words, if you know you have an isosceles triangle already, and you draw the perpendicular bisector of that base, of that AB, it's gonna go through, um, it's gonna go through that point you started with. Uh, let's read it this way. If a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector. Let's do another one of those. Uh, insert page. All right, so um, I already know I have an isosceles triangle. You have to have kind of an iso isosceles triangle first here. There's some randomly isosceles triangle with that congruent to that. That means, and they call it this E. If I drew the perpendicular bisector of AB, if I drew a line here, that was the perpendicular bisector like that. If I continue that line, it has to go through E. So that one's a little less useful. Um, it's good for if you're starting out with a um, isosceles triangle, which we're going to be doing here a bit, and you talk about, yeah, go ahead and bisect, draw the, you know, find the midpoint here, draw perpendicular. You know you don't have to worry about this. That's going to contain point E. Okay, so that's it for that one. I might need to go to the next page, which is here. So here's a problem with that. If M is the perpendicular bisector, so this line M does cut through here perpendicularly and it's the bisector, so I know that's true. Uh, WX is 4A, that's this one, 4A minus 15. WZ, ugh, that's this thing we down here. That's A plus 12, fine. WX, well that's the one thing. Uh, I know, since this is the perpendicular bisector, that those things have to be congruent. It's really not hard to prove that with congruent triangles, actually. Can you tell we would, would have had uh, SAS triangles here on the top and bottom? I would have done this reflexive and gone, ooh, SAS, and then ooh, CPCTC. Anyway, uh, what I do know, though, is these two algebra blobs, the 4A minus 15 and the A plus 12, they represent these two segments, and those have to be congruent. So here we go. Save time. And bam, A equals 9. All right, when three or more lines intersect at a point, that's called point of concurrency. I need some space to draw that. I'm going to draw that back here. So randomly also on this page. If you had uh, two lines that intersect, great, that's nothing new. You've seen two lines intersect before. But it could be that when a third line comes comes along and crosses the other two, it could actually cross and only hit the exact, okay, I bent a little bit to make it do it, uh, only hit that exact same point. This, when it's got three lines running through it, like, like three lines all intersecting the same point, that is kind of special. So we call that more than an intersection point. We call that a point of concurrency. 
that's kind of a, a big deal. Okay. Uh, right. So there's a bunch of points of concurrency coming up in triangles. Here's, um, here's the first one. It's called the circumcenter. This point here, P, we're going to call the circumcenter of triangle ABC. Now listen to how that gets found. There's about four of these little centers coming up. This is the circumcenter. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. This one is the one that's made with perpendicular bisectors. I'm going to highlight this because this is how this works. Perpendicular bisectors. Oh, it's green. Uh, perpendicular bisectors makes the circumcenter. Again, there's like four of these today. Uh, there's a page at the end, and you can flip over your page and look at them now. And you'll see which one goes with which. And it's on the theorem sheet, actually. As much as this looks like a definition, um, this is actually a theorem about what the circumcenter kind of does. And in that theorem, it gives you this definition. So you don't have to stay up all night memorizing which one goes with which. We did that last year. It was super fun. But anyway, um, this year, it's all in the theorem list for you. Perpendicular bisectors will make the circumcenter. So if you're looking at any triangle, and you find the perpendicular bisector of each side. We were just talking about perpendicular bisectors. So these little red things here, they're actually parts of entire lines we'd worry about as perpendicular bisectors. But here they just show it up to where they start to intersect because they don't want to have too much extra junk in the way. Anyway, what's kind of cool about any triangle is those three things actually turn out to be a point of concurrency. Those three things, oh, where did I put it? Those three lines always do this, which is kind of crazy. But any triangle is like that. In fact, I made one. Ooh, not this document. I made one and I can show you how that looks. Okay, so here's any old random triangle. I made this in GSP. If I show all the perpendicular bisectors, this is kind of cool how this always works. So there's all the perpendicular bisectors constructed. I don't know if you can kind of tell. What's cool about SketchUp is, of course, I can move this around and the perpendicular bisectors stay this way. So all these thin blue lines, they're all hitting their midpoints of the respective sides of the triangle and they are all staying perpendicular to the sides of the triangle. I don't know if you can watch that. I should send you this document so you can play with it yourself. And then that point always uh, ends up being uh, concurrent. Those three lines will always intersect in the same point, which is kind of cool. It can be outside the triangle. Ooh, look at that. Those three perpendicular bisectors, if you have an obtuse triangle, that's, that's a type of center that can move outside. You can see maybe we're going to do a lot of other kind of centers today. All right. So that's it. So the, the purpose of the, or the, the, the so what here, the reason why this is a theorem, the circumcenter is equidistant from the vertices. So not only is that a point, of, a point of concurrency, which is kind of cool, but then if you measure that distance from P to the corners of the original triangle, so PA to PB to PC, those are all the same length. And it shouldn't be too hard to figure out why. Um, remember, if let's look at AC for now. AC has this line, EP has its perpendicular bisector, and we just said in the last slide or so that any point on this red line is equidistant from A and C. So the distance from P to A, uh, what I got to use four marks now, the distance from P to A has, has to be the same as P to C. Well, then if you look at the side BC down here, PF is the perpendicular bisector. Any point on that has to be equidistant from PB and PC. Oh, so look, B to P has to be the same length as C to P. So yeah, they're all the same. Um, that's kind of a lot to look at. Let me clean this up in case you want to look at this later. Yeah. Okay. Different center. If that's not fun enough for you, we have more centers. Okay, so this one is, what if we took the triangle and instead of, so oh yeah, this is cool about this document, I can hide that, start over. Instead of doing perpendicular bisectors on each side, we could do angle bisectors. Now, you look at this, if I move it around, it's maybe easier to see. Now I've made Sketchpad give me all the angle bisectors of all the sides. So what these red lines are doing, they're bisecting the angle, I can flip it over. They're bisecting the angles of the triangle which is different than perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular bisectors do that, oh my gosh, look at all that stuff going on. So they're not necessarily the same thing. But this one is perpendicular, sorry, angle bisectors. And angle bisectors, when they intersect, we call that the in-center. And the in-center has different properties than the circumcenter. This one is equidistant from the sides. So first of all, it's, it's kind of cool that if all these angle bisectors meet at one point P. But now, instead of measuring the distance from P to A, P to B, P to C, you can tell those are all different. But if I actually measure the distance from P to side AB, so the way, the way to measure the distance from a point to a line is you have to measure it perpendicular. That's what these little perpendicular, that's not working. That's why these little perpendicular things are here. So like this little right angle at D and this right angle at E and this right angle at F, they're measuring the distance from P to each side of the triangle. And that has to be done on the perpendicular. And what they're saying is then that all three of those things are the same length, P to D, P to E, P to F, all the same length. 
that's kind of a cool property of um, of triangles too that that even works that there is such a thing. So that's angle bisectors. Okay, what's the deal with angle bisectors? How do we know that that's true? So they give you this rule about angle bisectors. I kind of wish I would have told you this before they told you about in center, but oh well, here it is. So the the, the story with angle bisectors is if you've got a point on the bisector of an angle, it has to be equidistant from the sides of the angle. Let me do that like I did with oh, perpendicular bisectors a second ago. So we have some random angle here. We find, or you know, you know how to construct this too. You, you make the, okay, that's not a great picture. It's not really perfect. You find the angle bisector of that. The deal with that is any point on there find any point on there and you measure the distance to this side and again we mean perpendicular we mean distance from point to line and the distance to the other side of the original angle this is the original angle those lengths have to be the same so we've just basically made two congruent right triangles by making this ice, uh, angle bisector here the converse of that's also true so it's sort of the backward story if you knew you have a point so you got some random angle and you got some point out in space here that happens to be the same distance from here and here, then you know that if you start, if you connect this to the point, what you've got on your hands here has to be the angle bisector. It's kind of a backwards direction that you would know things, but it turns out to also work out. That's why, again, these are biconditionals. These are um, converses of each other. We have the original angle bisector theorem and its converse. We're going to put them together on the theorem sheet so you don't have to keep them uh, straight in your mind that way. You can just say the biconditional will take care of either one. Let's do some problems with that. All right. So we have an angle bisector here. AC is the bisector of this bad angle here, angle BAD. So if I drew this, I know that has to be true. C is on such an angle bisector. Well, then the conclusion is C is the same distance from this ray as it is from this ray. And since these perpendiculars are already drawn in, I know that's exactly what we're talking about. It's the same distance from each ray. So the algebra blobs here, DC and BC, that's exactly what I just marked. So there's only one thing to do. And that's just to say that they're equal and then use some algebra and figure out what x is. Okay, so this is an in-center. tells me it's an in-center. tells me uh, I have to go back to my sheet and see the in-center. Oh, yeah, that's the angle bisector one. And oh, yeah, that's the one where all this red stuff, the distance to the sides, are all equal. So if sp is x plus 8 uh, and, what in, and pu is 18, well, sp and pu have to be the same because this is an in-center, so I know all three of these have to be the same. So all I can really say here, or all I need to think about here, is really that that's true, so x is 10. Uh, on the other one, find the measure of angle pxu. pxu, so find this thing. If I know that tzp is 22, okay, where's tzp? tzp, this is 22 and SYP, SYP, is 32 up here. Well, these are all angle bisectors, so I can figure all this out. I think I'm gonna have to go 180 in a triangle or something, but um, all these are angle bisectors. So if I know this is 32, then I automatically know that's 32. Remember, because PY was a bisector, uh, or P is an in-center, so that means angle bisector. Uh, so that's 22, that's 22. So the big angle over here is 44, like the entire angle in triangle, and the entire angle in the triangle here is 64. So that leaves 180 uh, minus that stuff. 180 minus the rest gives me, oh boy, 180 minus 108, that looks like 72. So this whole thing is 72, this entire angle over here. So each side has to be 36. So that's the answer to the question. See if I got time to do one more. Oh, I bet I do. Uh, it looks like I gotta split the two videos though. All right, one more center. This one's called the centroid. It's another point of con concurrency in triangles, but in this one, let me show you the sketch pad. So let's get rid of the angle bisector one. This one's about medians. Oh, you need to know what a median is. Okay. Medians, these are medians. All this does, this is kind of maybe, maybe this is the simplest one of the three so far. Median is just a connector from any point on the triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So all they're doing here is connecting midpoints. It's slightly different than the other two. Uh, if you don't believe me, there's the cent the in-center, and there's the circumcenter. And notice these are all different, because all the, and look at that, circumcenter goes way up there. In-center and centroid are kind of closer together. Circumcenter is kind of wild. But um, the median is, is kind of special. It's just uh, to the connecting the opposite midpoint. Uh, I'm going to have to talk about centroid a little more in the next video. I'll see you back there in a minute.